Welcome in. This is your odds checker betting preview for this week's Bermuda Championship. I'm Rick Gaiman. That right there, Jeff Feinberg. And Jeff, we've got a little extra cash in our pockets for a Bermuda Championship. Congratulations on Decky. Uh, same to you, buddy. I don't know. Felt like it was, uh, I don't know. I don't kind of pat yourself on the back too hard. It did feel quite obvious. So I'm just relieved I was there. We sort of spoke about it at the end of last week's video. Like we talked about it off the top. And then we came back around at the end, like, wait, the Olympic thing, like I think he benefited from kind of having that out of his system post the Masters. And this does actually feel like the an amazing spot. And he, he was kind of flawless, so there it is. Yeah, he almost damn near went wire to wire, and uh, the cash on the obvious ones spends just as well as the cash on the non-obvious ones, Jeff. So we'll certainly take that, and we're going to turn our attention to the Bermuda Championship, a field that uh, was 132 players, but with travel concerns and issues and all this stuff, we are sub-132. We're 130 players in the field as of us chatting right now, and it's Matt Fitzpatrick, at the top of this betting board, got a victory on the European Tour last week. He's 14 to 1 at Caesars, followed by Christian Bezadenhout at 16 to 1. And I'll just stop there because it's a weird week, a week that you have to kind of reassess your uh, perspective of the tour when Matt Fitzpatrick is 14 to 1 and Bezadenhout is 16 to 1. Yeah, uh, that's certainly got to give your head a shake. I'm curious if I was able to recall, like, last year's betting board and who the best players in the world um, were here. And we've been pretty fortunate to have some nicer end swing season events so far. But yeah, it seems, I mean, even like when guys like Justin Rose, who have a home on the course, don't want to play, it sort of tells you all you need to know about what we might be in store for this week. Yeah, I think that's right. You go a little bit further, you get nine-time winner Patrick Reed at 20-1. to Mito Pereira, who is going to be incredibly popular. And this is where the grid comes in handy for this week, Jeff, because Mito is 16-1 to at DraftKings, but 25-1 to at both Bet365 and Caesars. We saw Brian Gay win this event last year at probably multiple hundred to one. Is there any bet to be made here at the top of the board this time around the bet that i would consider and i am strongly considering it rick is not mito Pereira, who i acknowledge every piece of form and statistics says this guy is on the cusp of that pga tour breakthrough uh for me it's probably patrick reed a 20 to 1 nine time winner you said it uh the guys ahead of them that you like are fitzpatrick <laughs> and bezayden hope 20 to 1 for patrick reed in a field like this on a course that I'm sure we'll get to it with a few of the guys that I have in mind. I mean, you mentioned Brian Gay. I feel like G-Max won here uh, recently. It's a course. I know Gay isn't European, but it, it's a tricky short course uh, that, that really does seem to suit feisty veterans, feisty Europeans. And I know this isn't the number that's cashed the last few years, but... Patrick Reed is the type of player that can win with no form. He's that kind of guy. His swing from week to week, even like the deep swing analytics folks say there's kind of no rhyme or reason to it. Right. It'll show up or it won't. I'm kind of willing to bet at 20 to 1 versus this field. It's going to. Yeah, he's one of these guys that he he either has it or he doesn't for the week. And if he has it, watch out. He might win the golf tournament. I'll be the guy who gets the 25 to 1 number on Mito. It feels obvious. It feels comfortable at the top of the board. If the winds start kicking in Bermuda, I want ball strikers. So Mito probably gets my first click at 25 to 1. And then we enter, Jeff, a, a, a list of names that most people aren't going to recognize. You have you have Hayden Buckley here, who's coming up from uh, this is his first full year on the PGA Tour. Seamus Power, who got it done at the Barbasol. Uh, and then some more familiar names like Adam Hadwin, Danny Willett here in this 30 to 40 range. This is where we start to separate. And I think uh, at least uh, perceptions and different narratives and different thoughts around the industry are going to go in wildly different directions here. Yeah, you're 100% uh, right about that, Rick. And um, I would say like, well, how do I put this? It does feel like a course that doesn't really reward some of these guys' distance. And that's why it does feel like some of the veteran guys that have maybe lost a thing or two with the driver have shown to, shown to have life here. But I would. it does also feel like you mentioned the Hayden Buckleys, that this could be like a hello world moment for a lot of these youngsters. Like I have this picture of this event playing out with savvy veterans. 
but a couple of these young guys just might find a way to absolutely overpower it. Unfortunately, I'm pivoting off that take. In this range, it's players like Adam Hadwin, an absolute disciple on the greens, uh, has my eye at 35 to 1. And I can't help myself, Rick. The only thing that negative I could say about Danny Willett, it's kind of <laughs> like Patrick Reed. This event is beneath him. If you sort of look at the trophy case and the events he's won, Matthew Fitzpatrick's just off a win, but so is my guy Willett. 40 to 1 on a course that's been very kind of feisty veteran golfers. The conditions can get really tough here as anyone, you know, who's ever been to any of these islands. You didn't have to pick up a golf club. You just imagine trying to hit a golf club in some of the wins you can get on these tropical islands. So Danny Willett, Adam Hadwin are sort of those guys above the elites in front of 50 that have my attention. Yeah, and the the board uh, is all over the place. I mean, if you're talking about, uh, let's see, Chad Ramey, one of these kind of young up-and-coming guys, anywhere from 28 to 40 to 1. Danny Willett, anywhere from 27 to 40 to 1. The, you're going to need to Adwin, be using... 35 to 22, like yeah. using this odds checker grade. You're going to have to shop it, and this is why the grid's great. You took the words out of my mouth. I, I have not made a wager. Well, I never make a wager without checking the grid, but you almost need to triple check it on a field and an event like this where the books, it's not a major, it's not a big event. They right. really don't have much of a clue how to price them. And we're seeing not much of a consistency. Yeah, we'll always see some copycat bookmaking, but we are seeing some, some vulnerability across this board. Yeah, some exciting players, uh, 50 to 1 and longer as well. Joseph Bramlett, he's a big hitter. Steven Yeager, again, another graduate of the Corn Ferry. Sahith Tagala, who has gotten in the mix early in his young PGA Tour career. I'm still a bit partial to Patrick Rogers here at 50 to 1 because I'm a sucker, Jeff. And Patrick Rogers does things that, um, you know, with the driver that I think are special. And he's got that, that rare combination of the longest club in his bag is pretty good and the shortest club in his bag is pretty good. He can putt it and he can drive it well. So he's got my attention here. Are you going to be making any clicks in this range? Uh, I haven't made any clicks in this range yet. I will say there are just a lot of guys um, like, like a Dylan Fertelli. You know, the form isn't right right now, but he just has such great experience, whether it being the South African factor or, you know, the, the, the Texas factor, being able to sort of handle specific ball flights when conditions get tough. A guy that has won on tour that I could make a case for for having some value here. Um, going above 50, another guy that has, has my attention, Rick, trying to find him on the grid. But that would be Kramer Hickok. That number might be so big on the grid that I'm skipping over 100. I'm not sure, but it is that sort of... Uh, mishmash of of a field that like to your Patrick Rogers point as someone like you who believes in Patrick Rogers how do you not go to the wall with him in a field where Matthew Fitzpatrick is the by the book the best player here it, it, it yes I I completely agree Kramer Hickok uh 65 to one in some places triple digits at DraftKings 100 to one crazy Absolutely crazy. I will back up just a little bit because there was a name. And again, this is where we f kind of battle uh, course history, course fit, right? Brian Stewart, this is probably one of the few courses that's set up really well for him. Mark Hubbard, 75 to 1. He is not he's one of the shortest hitters on the PGA tour. He's one of the most accurate hitters on the PGA tour. When you're needing to play out of the fairway, when you're needing to shape shots, when you're needing to roll putts, this is the type of setup that you get for guys, uh, like, like a setup where, where guys like Hubbard can find a way to come out of it. So this, this range here, 60 to one to a hundred to one, even depending on the books is absolutely massive. Jeff, should, should we move on? Is there another name here? You mentioned Hickok. Is there anybody else? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you mentioned Hubbard, but to your point, a lot of guys that can just be absolutely unconscious when they put themselves in the right position. Do I want to swallow a 55 to 1 on, say, Ryan Armour? <laughs> absolutely not. But every bet you're considering making or not making, you literally need to tell yourself Brian Gay won this event last year. And I want to go as far to say there was zero form for Brian um, winning this event. So it almost, 
it almost allows you to convince yourself that any bet you want to make is a good bet when you sort of have that past history here. That can be dangerous, though. Yeah, and you look at uh, the last two winners, Brian Gay, Brendan Todd, cut from a very similar cloth of driving accuracy, not distance, and start rolling the rock. And when you start finding guys who might be able to find the magic, and I've, I've talked about this a little bit this week, some of these guys know they're overmatched on most golf courses on the PGA Tour. When they show up here, they're licking their chops. It's an actual opportunity for them. So you can make a case for a lot of guys. I like Dylan Wu. Dylan Wu, 150 to 1. He won a Corn Ferry Tour at the end of last season, kind of getting his feet wet there in the winner's circle. He's one of these guys with a, a Hello World moment, and he's 150. There's, there's going to be so many cases to make, Jeff. Do you want to make any more in the triple digits? Yeah, I mean, literally, but you could. <laughs> Good. It doesn't sound crazy if you do want to advocate for, say, like a Graham McDowell at 100 to 1, a Luke Donald 180 to 1 using that odds checker grid. You know, guys that there is no pretty much on one hand, you could count the types of places they could go to on yes. tour and have the type of feeling that they're going to have on a Wednesday night this week where, where to your point, it isn't a pre pre tee off defeated feeling uh kurt katayama 100 uh over 100 to 1 has my attention and how do i put this rick even even players as ridiculous you mentioned you mentioned dylan wu but my guy adam svensson a canadian uh he has been lingering around as well over 100 to 1 would be a player that could have my attention. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, Canadians. Um, uh, David Hearn, I thought, was interesting. Taylor Pendrith would have to do it in kind of a different way, and I'm I'm waiting to see Taylor Pendrith. But there there is a contingent of Canadians that could certainly get the job done this week. When you are constructing your card, Jeff, uh, for me, my card's generally five-ish. Five, five-ish guys kind of spread out, uh, obviously, depending on how heavily invested at the top I want to be. If you want to play the Brian Gay game, if you want to play the 80 to 1 and deeper, there is a lot of small investments that you can make on a, on a chunk of the field. Yeah. And history would say at this event, that's the type of bit to make is just throw, just keep chucking a few darts, you know, north of 60, 70 80 to one and beyond that probably does feel like an ideal strategy, but I'm beholden to two guys that uh, veterans with, with trophy cases at read at 40, will it, or sorry, read at 20, will it at 40 and had one at 35. If I'm stepping in front of, in front of 50 to one, those are the three golfers that I'm looking at north of it. It's Kramer Hickok for me at the moment. The forecast obviously can change in a moment's notice, but it looks a little wet, looks a little windy, might be a little sloppy, might be a little mutter, maybe Danny Willett situation. I don't know. I could probably could get myself convinced on Danny Willett by the time by the time this thing actually tees off on Thursday morning. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, you know, like I said, off the win in Scotland, the form is there. He knows how to, if it gets hairy and if it plays to the type of winner that's won the last couple years, he does sort of fit into that other than the fact he's 40, not 80 or 100 um, to one. But as I mentioned off the top, he he is sort of... Graham McDowell's probably the poster boy for like feisty bulldog European. But, you know, you've seen so much love this week already for a guy like Russell Knox, who yeah. I don't think is at a top five in like four years. That just shows you the type of player people are kind of trying to pinpoint this week that this course historically has honored. Yeah, that's a good point. Russell Knox, 45 to 1 at DraftKings. That's the best number available on him. The grid, the odds checker grid is must view this week as it is each and every week. But that'll do it for our odds checker betting preview of this Bermuda Championship. Jeff Feinberg, you can follow him on Twitter at GFeinberg17. And you can follow me at Rick Run Good. Good luck, and we'll catch you next time.